Hello, my name is Jonathan Wisniewski. I am the sole engineer and owner of Second River Studios. And I also play bass in my band Upmost. Um, so I just wanted to go through the bore mixes. Um, we did this awesome fucking split together and I'm really proud of all the like just weird details that I was able to put into these mixes and and I can get like really creative. So I figured I'd just walk through them and, and uh, you know, show off a little bit about what we did to achieve the sound of the uh, split. So at the start of the song, there's this intro drum part. First off, <laughs> um, my room doesn't sound like that, you know, like my room is not, it sounds like super roomy. Um, so first thing I did was probably um, raised up the room tracks here. Let's see. Because I like really roomy up yep, right there. So raise the room tracks here. That's what they sound like. So <clears throat> to get like a kind of bigger sounding room, added a little verb. Um, and the main thing I did with the room mics is um, I faced the null of them towards the drums so that I'm mostly just getting the reflections of the room and not much of the actual drums. So um, yeah, let me go ahead and solo the drums here and we'll have a listen. If you could hear uh, at some point during those blast beats, um, I don't know if the snare detuned or if it, um, or if he was just playing the snare like differently, but it, it kind of drops in pitch, but I kind of liked that. So I was like, I'm going to keep that because it sounds cool. It's kind of like when you're lowering the guitar halfway into a measure. Uh, like the guitar note or something. So to me, that was like pleasant, you know, it was like a pleasant accident, but you know, just goes down there. And I, I like that, you know, happy mistake, but it was cool. Um, and yeah, so in the context of that part, it just like kind of changes something a little. Uh, so here. So yeah, um, I was, you know, just a little mistake that was cool. Um, so right here I have the natural kick. Fucking <laughs> um, And then over here is the sample that I blended in with it. It's just kind of adding more of that uh, pokey, kind of a little clickier sounding kick drum. Um, I normally gravitate away from that sound, but for this band and this genre, I think it just worked and it helped the the drums, or specifically the kick drum, cut through a bit. And then right here is the room drum sample. So um, that's just blended in really low, and it's there just to add a little bit of naturalness to the kick sound because without it, it just you know, it's like you can't even hear it, but <clears throat> in the context of the full drum mix, um, just helps it sound a little more natural. Um, and it allows me to automate the uh, kick room mics up in certain sections and just make it sound like the drums are further away. Um, so yeah, uh, that is the kick sound. This is the snare top natural sound. So like super gritty. Um, I really like using uh, the distortion on the stock lo-fi plugin because the stock lo-fi plugin has a clipper built into it. So it allows you to get um, kind of a louder snare without all those peaks fucking up all of your compressors and shit. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, some gnarly EQ moves, you know, go big or go home. Um, 
I also have uh, some Slate uh, console emulation just fucking cranked. Um, <laughs> and, you know, a little bit of gating. Um, but yeah, and then some, you know, uh, what is it called? Uh, transient designer at the end. So that's just giving it more attack. Um, and then I always like to put a tape on a, on a snare because I don't want the transients too, uh, pokey. It just kind of smooths them out a little bit. Um, and also like, uh, most tape emulations have like kind of a, um, a filter on them so they'll roll off a lot of the top end that you don't really need which is just in you know for natural snare mics um it's usually just cymbal bleed up there um and then yeah this is the snare bottom mic just i think i just straight up put i don't remember if it was a beta 52a or if i switched over and started using um this like really old vintage german like kind of 58 uh, mic, but it's just getting the, you know, just getting the snares. It's just kind of adding a little bit of length to the snare. Um, as you can see, I put the compressor faster on the snare bottom so that, because to me, the snare bottom, the attack of it doesn't really sound that pleasant. So I like to still get that um, from the top mic, but for the bottom mic, I'll put a fast compressor uh, and then kind of like a fast release so that there's more of that round length to the snare. So if I did, you know, it just doesn't sound as cool with a, a slow attack on the bottom. Uh, and then right here is the snare sample I blended in. So the snare sample in this case is just adding a lot of that um, transient that I either couldn't achieve with the natural snare mic or just felt like this sample sounded better. Um, so yeah, uh, I know a lot of people are not into using samples or whatever. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do what makes your song sounds good. So. Uh, yeah, and then there's a room mic blended in. It's a mix of some room samples I have, plus a uh, room snare sample that I made uh, actually right before recording this. Um, we set up the drums in the downstairs of the sheet metal factory, and the ceilings are huge, so we mic'd it up and made some drum samples, and they sound really cool. Um, <clears throat> but onward, <laughs> here's the rack, Tom. You know, as you could tell, there's a lot of cymbal bleed and shit in it. Um, you know, kept it in there, whatever. Sounds raw, sounds fine in the context of the drum mix. You know, just to play it right there in that section. You don't hear it, you know, big deal. If, you, if it's in solo and you, you hear all this shit, but then in the context of the mix, it's not there, it's fine. Um... But yeah, and then I have a uh, snare close room, snare close mic um, sample mixed in, and then a snare room, or I mean rack room, just really low. Um, these are also, you know, original drum samples we made right before recording. Uh, here's the floor tom. <laughs> it's like not even there. That one might have been something that I had to just use a sample there because maybe the the hit wasn't quite there with the cymbal bleed, but yeah. Uh, and then the overheads. Again, I like I like capturing the full kit. Um, so, you know, I did a ton of top end boosting just cause for this song and record I wanted the symbols to be like very exciting sounding and i feel like i remember um uh dale's drum kit having like kind of darker symbols i might be wrong maybe i'm nuts and i just boosted it like crazy for the fuck of it but <laughs> um 
yeah so that's basically the gist of the drum sound for now there's sections where i'm automating things and you know uh i'll probably get to those once once we're in those areas but yeah so in the intro of the song there's all these really cool um digi tech whammy pedal guitar parts so for that we decided to put it on a separate track because it was a little cleaner um, but here's the rhythm tracks so it's just like a natural harmonic rung out and uh, you know quick little tasty riff um, but right here underneath that is the digi tech whammy part Woo! Sounds fucking awesome. Um, so, you know, do left and right. That just sounds like you're on a spaceship and you're going to Mars. Um, but yeah, so... <laughs> and then also, on the right side is the other guitar. I remember um, <laughs> right before tracking... Um, Danny's guitar with the beautiful, awesome um, Evertune bridge. For some reason, something just got fucked on his guitar, so we couldn't use it. So we had to use um, Alex's uh, Fender. It was like a oh Fender Jaguar. Um, and you know, normally that isn't the guitar I'd use in this genre, but we were short on time, and you know that guitar was available and it sounded good and you know we used it and it came out fine um so yeah uh onward is the bass tone so what i did with the bass was i <clears throat> i recorded just a di into a um amp sim but before the amp sim i put a my favorite bass distortion pedal which is the uh proco rat that I bought. Um, it's an original, I think, 1980s one from Kalamazoo, Michigan, uh, not the Chinese one. And I think, sorry, it must have been a reissue because I remember I went and got uh, the original um, LM308 chip installed into that. Um, so, yeah, that's what this sounds like. You know, Sid just fucking ripping it all day. Um, but yeah, so I remember he, you know, they were talking to me about how they really felt that uh, Boar's music is basically the drums and the bass are their focus. The guitars are just adding color. And then the vocals is kind of like what tells the story. So they were talking to me about the bass tone and how they really uh, wanted like a really solid awesome bass tone and they're like yeah we have like this four track system we use and that's good i was like yeah let me just try this like rat <laughs> and then they dug it so <laughs> that worked out um but yeah uh so that's the bass tone and then we have <clears throat> our boy uh brandon i always call him brendan but I th i'm pretty sure it's brandon i could be an idiot but our boy brendan is just fucking screaming his lungs off we have blood real bad blood we have blood in the making some real bad blood in the making so you know homie's just singing his heart out um but yeah, basically, I just have that going through some console emulation, some EQ, some compression, some a little more EQ, uh, some tape. Um, this is an effect that'll happen later, and then some distortion, limiter, and I think what is giving that like really cool side reverb thing is uh, a mix of all the doubler reverbs and delays I have thrown on here, but. Um, yeah, so why don't we play the song a bit and I'll stop once I hear a cool part to talk about.
right, so right here, the drums, uh, I boosted up the room mic so the drums sound a little further away. As you can hear right here, it just sounds more forward. But yeah, for that one section during uh, Sid's kind of bass, bass riffy thing, I decided to make the drum sound a little further away and uh, actually also boost up the bass a little bit so that cuts through more. Um, this next part right here. I had the idea um, that I ran through uh, Brandon and I said, hey, uh, why don't you sing the um, guitar lead right there and I'll just, you know, put a bunch of effects on it, make it sound weird. And, um, you know, he was like, all right, like, what do you mean? So I remember um, I just went up and sang it really quick. And then he was like, well, that sounded good. Why don't you just do it? <laughs> so I am officially a vocalist of Boar. Um, I'm not, but, uh, this is me doing some singing on it. As you can tell very shittily because I'm out of tune, but it kind of works <laughs> in, in context, you know? Um, but what I did here was, um, gain reduction just to, you know, compress it and all that. Um, I only wanted like the fundamental of the vocal. So like, um, I remember watching this video where they were talking about how, uh, every instrument or sound has a fundamental to it. And <clears throat> once you take away all the extra harmonics, now you can't really distinguish it from other instruments. So I wanted it to sound ghostly. Um, so I did just the fundamental and then I drove it into this like tape emulator so driving it into that gives it that like kind of gritty um kind of like harmonic sound to it and then you know mixed in a little bit of verb uh and looks like I'm doing an octave down too as a layer and do it on both sides. I think one of them has, uh, where is it? Here it is. Oh, never mind. Um, all right, yeah. So, yeah, that's it with those. Sounds cool. Just a neat little layer. Um, Remember that this is the only clean track on the entire uh, bore side of the split. That's it. Just that right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember we were like dialing in the tone. He was like, all right, that's it. That's the whole thing. I was like, sick. So all that needed was some EQ. That's it. Um, and then that jumps nicely. So here's a little um, mixing thing I did during this section. This guy comes on, this radio effect, so that <clears throat> Brendan sounds further away. And I wanted that so that when the rest of the band kicks in in the next part, everything feels more forward and more energetic. Um, so I'll play it going into that. instantly like forward you know in your fucking face um but another cool thing with the ending of uh this song um when i was in thailand um actually we'll get to that in a second i want to talk about these vocal layers so <clears throat> So Brendan, he doesn't, 
I think he was a little adverse to singing, but he was like down with it. He was like, we'll try out anything, you know? He's awesome with trying out ideas. Just fucking awesome. But, so, I was like, why don't we harmonize that and make it sound more of like a choir thing? So, <laughs> I was like, do the octave down, you know, just tucked in. All together, it's like this. It's just adding like this choir kind of sound to it because, you know, I didn't think I, I put two and two together at the time, but <clears throat> the ending line of this song is uh, have faith in your fire. So that's like, to me, I know that Brendan didn't originally have that with the meaning of those lyrics, but have faith in your fire to me, uh, I immediately um, thought of like a religious thing. Um, so all right <laughs> to the ending sample um i wanted something that would like wash out the song at the end so i remember when i went to thailand i was uh walking down this mountain with my now fiance and we heard um like like chanting and singing and and praying from a mosque like i don't even know how far away but the sound of that was bouncing around uh, in the mountain and making this like echoey kind of like just gnarly sound. So I whipped out my phone and recorded it. And this is what it sounds like uh, with no effects. You know, you'll hear footsteps. There's wind blowing, you know, you would think it's unusable. But I put a bunch of effects on it, and now it sounds like this. So I think the main thing that I was doing was I was using the kind of tremolo sound from this uh, DB33, which is a organ emulator. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I was, I'm mainly using this for the drive and the, uh, kind of like tremolo effect that gives off. Um, and then there's just a bunch of verb and, you know, a uh, ton of other weird shit that probably automates and does. Oh yeah. So I dropped it, raised it in pitch, dropped the sample size. probably drop right at the end over here yeah um so yeah and then under that i layered fire so together it sounds like this And to me, you know, again, it, it just fit with the lyrics to me. That's the interpretation I got out of it. Um, and yeah, so I threw that in there and I, I thought it was just, you know, a sample like that is like such a gem, you know, because not many people have like <laughs> sounds of, of like monks singing in Thailand. Um, so I I thought this would be a really cool place to put that in there. Um, and I don't know, just, just add something, add something kind of mysterious to the end of the part. Uh, so next song, Magpie. I don't know if this is the working title, but... Um, Then we got Danny over here. So 
songs just fast paced killer fucking you know the the dudes in board know how to write songs and know how to write them well so um a lot of it was just tracking it and then <laughs> uh the one notable thing that i kind of added to this one is uh during this build up breakdown part I So during this part, the drums are hitting the toms, uh, matching like the bass. So I found this <laughs> epic war drum VST that sounds like this that I layered underneath it just to give it some weight. And, you know, if I take that away from here, there's just like a little bit of like weight missing from this part. Oh! Just adds like that, like just fucking heaviness that it needed. So yeah, that's what's going on there. That. I don't know what it is. It just adds so much. Um, and yeah, I mean, the rest of the song, you know, is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, but yeah, had an awesome time working with board dudes and mixing on these and adding just like some weird creative stuff in the mixing process. And yeah, um, it was a great time. So this was my mix of <laughs> the boar side of the utmost boar split.